You should check this out. There's a really cool web here. That's what we're going to talk about today is a web. How about that? Isn't that cool? You see it? It's got a little hole in it. Steve, not we're not talking about spiders today. We're not talking about spiders today? No. Oh. <laughs> hey, guys. How y'all doing today? It's Steve uh, with Zoo Adventures. I hope you guys enjoyed last week. It was a little bit different, wasn't it? We talked about it was Earth Day and Earth Week. How do we not celebrate that with you guys, our digital guests? We're so happy you guys did tune in. It was awesome to have Leslie come back and for a little quick visit. So thank you very much to Leslie. Remember, there are folks answering your questions live as you ask them. And that's been really cool. It's been fun to see that. Today, we have a very special thing for you all to do. We're over our Rocky Coast habitat. And we're going to learn about California sea lions. And one of their keepers is going to be with us. I think she's here. That's Christina, guys. That's keeper Christina. It was like Ashley, maybe, and Nikki coming out. Now, you notice they all have their masks on. One of the things we have to do in keeper world right now, they just have to work with, is anybody working with mammals, and of course a California sea lion is a mammal, is wearing that mask because of COVID. So anytime we have that kind of real close connection, we, do, we are wearing masks. So you see all the keepers in here wearing masks and somebody being very impatient. Christina, hey, how are you doing? Thank you so much for tuning in, for being here. Diesel. Diesel is a five-year-old male California sea lion. That is awesome. Yeah, and he was here with um, another sea lion named Owen. Owen oh, cool. We get some special one-on-one -on -one time behind the scenes, though. I don't want to be, don't want to be getting jealous or no, anything, huh? No. And then we also have two Atlantic harbor seals that you'll see oh, in the background. Is that Ashley and Nikki working them? Yep. Yeah, I can't. And I can't tell with their masks on. <laughs> so here's Ashley waving at you right now, and then Nikki way back in the back. Look, she's doing eye drops. Yeah, so we're doing a little bit of a training session with our uh, seals and our sea lions right now. Very cool. Now, one thing that kind of happens every single day that kind of gets the little bit of down is that we have to change the Looking at the California sea lion, and that's because she has her mask on, I'm going to repeat some stuff for you. And one of the ways that a California sea lion is a sea lion is those ear flaps right behind the eyes. And what do you guys think they're using their ears for? Any guesses what they might use their ears for? What might they use their ears for? I don't know. They're, in the, they're under the water. I don't know what they would use their ears for. I don't know. What are, what are they going to use their ears for? He's gonna are you wondering? <laughs> he looks like he was thinking with us. <laughs> Raspberries or something. <laughs> That's a big bark. Are you kidding me? So he's using those four flippers, those front flippers. He kind of flaps them in the water to move around, and that's giving him that really fast acceleration. Yep. And you said that they can get to be 25 miles per hour? 25, 
25 miles per hour. Now, Holy cow. You notice the seal and Drummond looks like he came to join after the <laughs> Oh, yeah, you don't see the claws on this one. are going to use their front flippers for stealing. And their side flippers, in a side-to-side -side motion, like that, <laughs> are when they swim. And that is how seals get their power. <laughs> so, if you that was fun. long, strong front flippers, like a sea lion, a sea lion. If you have those short front flippers with those claws, you're a seal. Gotcha. And that's going to be the two main ways you can tell a seal and a sea lion apart. And you mentioned, Christine, you asked our group, what do they use those ears for? Right. Um, is, do they use them like you and I do? Absolutely. They How about that? They use so they can actually tell each other apart by the way that they sound. Oh. And also by the way that they smell. They actually have a really excellent sense of smell. So they can tell themselves apart by the way they sound and the way they smell. Yeah. But their barks are very different, and you can actually tell them apart just by the way that they sound. And let me tell you guys, when I'm here at the zoo, I don't know them apart. I cannot tell them apart. I need to rely on the keepers. So it's kind of cool that there might be something there that I can learn, and maybe you can too down the road. We have a question. Hold on, Christine, we have a question. We're, uh, we have uh, guests asking how old they are. It's a very cool story. Only. Now, I say only because when they're full grown, they'll actually reach anywhere between 400 and 600 pounds. Wow. Yeah. So they still have a lot of growing to do. Our harbor seals, but our harbor seals, Ronan and Paco, are 12 years old. 12. 12. So Paco and one of the seals are 12. They have predators? They have predators. He's so big. They are so big, but there are bigger animals out there that would want to eat them. And one of them is, uh, he's going to eat them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha, ha. What animal would have a fin out of the water that might be a predator? That's awesome, Christina. That was awesome. What animal might have that flipper up there, that fin out of the water, cutting through the air? The sharks. That's awesome. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty scary. I didn't think about that. Sharks and, and orcas. They really fast to get away from those animals. They're also fairly agile. They can move jumping in and out of the water. And a move called porpoising. But they're also really good at fast work. I'm going to show some of that off for you. Wow. Look how flexible. Did you guys see that? How fun is that that they're able to get through the water that way? And I know you've seen other animals do that too. You've seen like the dolphins and the, they're actually kind of porpoising going through the water up and down. That was really cool. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut in here for a second, Christina. Your stuff's really cool. But I think we, one of the really cool things that I see you doing, you've got that, when it comes to your fish, you've got some fish, you have a whistle. What is all that about? Because he's got some, he's really focused on you and, and seems to trust you a lot. Yes. Um, I've been working with him now for about two years, um, and all the training that we do is through positive reinforcement. Okay. Meaning when they do something that we ask, they're going to get something that they like. Okay. What do you guys think they really, really like? What do you guys think they really like? What would be a reinforcer for them? I have a pretty good idea. I've heard from some of you guys before. What about for the sea lion? What would Diesel be looking for? He's definitely looking for that fish. Fish. Yeah. Um, and so the whistle tells him if he doesn't Okay. That means good job, you've done that right, and you're going to get something you really, really want. So the, so, the, so the whistle tells him good job. Right. And there's something coming. Right. Okay. Now, one thing you're going to notice, I'm asking him to hit on or target on my fist. Okay. That means he knows that he's got to put his nose to my fist, and he's got to hold it there until I tell him good job. Right? But nice. But this is a very, this is a very close behavior we train. Okay. From this, Whoa! Whoa! 
Whoa! Okay. You can do that by following my fist. So all the behaviors that you see us doing, you know, just from that very first target behavior. Right. Okay. So why do some of the why do some of the behaviors he's doing? What does it matter? Can so you do anything? Absolutely. absolutely. So there are three main reasons why we train our animals here. Okay. Um, one of them is to keep them physically safe. So outside, oh. they would have to do things like hunt for their food and escape from their predators. Here they don't have to do that. Right. So one of the things we can do is ask those high energy behaviors, uh, like jumping them in and out of the water, uh, doing those Okay. So that's kind of that ex, kind of an exercise thing for him. Very cool. Right. So in the because in the wild he'd have to solve problems out there, wouldn't he? How do I hunt? Where do I go? What do I do in this situation? So he's solving problems through training. Husbandry. Yep. I can brush his teeth. Brush his teeth. Yeah, I don't have a toothbrush with me right now, but you'll see that he's really comfortable with me. Yeah, he was. Good. Wow. She's treating. Imagine the trust, guys. Not just between Christina and the C and Diesel, but Diesel to Christina. He has to trust her that nothing bad's going to happen too. Yeah. So those relationships are amazing. He's getting right close to his eye. Yeah, so we don't like really that. I'm sorry, and Christina, so, they're, pro they're prone to what? Uh, eye issues. Eye issues. So we can actually train him to hold his eye open and let us, let us put um, eye drops in his eye. Okay. We can look inside of his nose. I can touch <laughs> his ears just like we get a cold, so do they. Okay. Uh, and then again, we can ask him to lay down, and this is a really important behavior. I don't know how many of you have five or six-year-olds at home. <laughs> Oh, that. yeah, that makes sense. So, um, but this is a good way for us to get a good body check on them. And we can even take blood from them in this position. Oh, really? Ultrasounds in this position. We can do x-rays and all voluntary. That means that we would never have to put them under anesthesia. He's trained to let us do that all on his own. And do, do you have to do... <laughs> How much fun is that? Now, do you... <laughs> Diesel, I have a question. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's fine. You let him do his thing. Um, now, do you have to do all the work by yourself, or can somebody else come out? Like you're talking about blood draws and stuff. Do you have to do it by yourself, or can somebody like a vet come out with you? Our vets are uh, the ones who actually take the blood. Oh, the okay. People. And so these guys are trained to let someone else come and touch them. While nice. The Where are you going? He's like, I really want to be in the water. <laughs> it's probably cool in there. It is probably cool in there. Very nice. That's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hello to you guys. How's that? That is so neat. He's able to do this. And it's awesome that you've built that bond. You said two years, Christina? I've been working with people now for two years. So over two years, build that bond, build that relationship of trust between the animal, Diesel in this case, and Christina in this moment. So we have a question, Christina. So I have a couple questions. One is what kind of fish do they eat? And a second question is when you're not asking for behaviors and you're feeding them, how are you feeding them differently? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. question. So first of all, I'm just gonna, before I answer those, I just let people know that we are done with our session because oh, I ran out of fish in my bucket. So we're gonna tell him all done. You know he's gotta go to the water and that's what he's gonna get his last couple fish and now he's going to do whatever he wants. So nice. we always communicate with our animals what's happening. So the first question, what kind of fish are they eating? that phrase before. Yes, and so they'll actually eat whatever they can put in their mouth. <laughs> so out of the wild, these guys can get anywhere from 50 to 80 different species of fish, depending on where they're living. 50 to 80 wow. different species? Yes. Holy Here's cow. We feed them four. So we give them capelin, <laughs> capelin. We give them smelt. Smelt. They get herring. Herring. And they get squid. Squid. <laughs> Not a bad choice. Not a bad choice. That's yes. awesome. And then um, the other question was, how else do we feed them? Right. So majority of our food comes to them in our training sessions, and every day it's a little bit different. So every day we'll 
will change up how many training sessions we okay. do. We train, uh, change up the settings, so maybe uh, we'll only work with one animal, or all four of us will be working with four animals, or we can separate them like we did for this cool. particular session. Yep. Um, so that's a little bit different. So most of their food comes from training. Yep. However, we will use some of their diet and enrichment. Um, oh, we've so, heard that term before too, enrichment. Yes, yes. enrichment is anything that we can give our animals that's going to change up their day. So we can freeze some fish into blocks of ice. That's probably one of their favorites. Nice. Um, and we can deliver that uh, fish that way. We can stuff it and hide it in different toys. Oh, and good. that's going to encourage natural hunting and foraging behaviors. Yeah, we got to solve um, So our two into lions it. do get trained multiple times a day. They also get enrichment all throughout the day. Um, so those are the two main ways they're going to get their fish delivered to them. Very cool. And guys, these guys have a really neat story, a really neat how they came to the North Carolina Zoo. Because you're not going out and just collecting these guys, right? You're not going out and just finding them. Not a whole lot of places are breeding them under human care. So, Christina, yeah. Diesel and Owen did come with a really unique story. Would you mind telling their story that started about five years ago? Absolutely. So, Diesel and Owen were both rescued as pups off of the Pacific Coast. How cool so is that? California sea lions are found. California coast. Well, there right? you go. There you go. <laughs> now, they can be found as north as Canada and okay. as south as Mexico. So, they're all up and down that coast. Oh, wow. And what happened was is that they were found as babies right. starving to death. So, one way or the other, mom wasn't allowed to feed them. So, um, so the two so the two, sea lions, two pups, mom wasn't able to take care of. Remember, it's, it's two separate pups. So it's two separate moms stranded and mom wasn't able to take care of them. So, they were then found stranded and starving. So once they were found, they were rescued by a facility out in California. Yay! They were rehabilitated. Sweet. And that's a big fancy word for make, making healthy again, yeah, right? Perfect. So they yep. got all the meds they needed. They got really fat and plump and all the food that they needed. Um, and then they were good candidates to go back out into the wild. Okay. So both Diesel and Owen were actually re-released back out into the wild. Unfortunately, just a couple of months later, they were both found again and starving to death. They so, never learned those critical skills on how to hunt. Gotcha. So after their second rescue, they were deemed non-releasable by the U.S. government, meaning right. that they just couldn't survive out on their own. So right. after that, they were actually uh, brought into a facility, okay. and they were kind of up for adoption. We had this space here for sea lions, and we said that we would love to give them their forever home. And they've been with us ever since. They uh, were about one year old when they came to the zoo. Okay. Um, and this June, they will be six. This so they June, be they'll be six. Yeah. Yes. What an amazing story, huh? That these guys, they were stranded, they were rehabilitated, they were kind of plumped up and medicated and everything was good. They were deemed releasable, put back out there. Um, and by tracking and finding out who's who, when they came back, unfortunately, they weren't able to survive on their own. Uh, and then the government saying, where can they go? Where can their, I love your phrase, that forever home be? And you've heard that before in fostering worlds and other places. Um, how, where is that forever, for, that forever home going to be? And we're lucky enough that it's right here yes. at the North Carolina Zoo for Diesel and for Owen. You're that's welcome, awesome. they're a lot of fun. And that's an amazing stuff. Yeah. And it's really cool and, and fun to see those neat behaviors and realizing that they're not they're not just behaviors for behavior's sake. Now, some of them are fun, but it's exercise, right? It's getting them moving around, up and down, as you were saying, getting the heartbeat going on, solving problems, looking for things to, to get in and, and get into the enrichment and break that stuff down. Um, but most importantly, for the, medic, for the medical side of things, the veterinary side of things. So I can, I can put my hands on and touch. I can look in their mouth. How cool is that? And if you didn't really get a chance to see it, we don't have any skulls or anything to share with you. The teeth are pretty impressive. They're carnivores, right? So those fish, the squid, those are, that's all meat. Remember, it's not just a cow, it's all that is meat. So they're all carnivores. So being able to look in the mouth and, and check things out in there, it's amazing yeah. to have that relationship with the animals. Yeah, Wendy. It's perfect that you're talking about teeth. Do they swallow their fish or chew the fish? Oh, great question. That would not be a good idea. That would not be a good idea. Just like it would make you be sick, it also would make them sick. They get all the water that they need from the fish that they eat. If oh. they were constantly chewing up their fish, they would lose that precious water content. So uh, for the most part, they're going to swallow their food whole. Now, if they catch something that's too big for them to swallow, they will rip it up into smaller pieces. Uh, but for the most part, they are swallowing their fish whole. 
But even then, they're not going to be chewing that fish. They're, or that, let's say it's a, a large carcass or something. They're going to tear a piece off and swallow and that. Swallow. Yep. There yep. you go. And that's true for all whales and dolphins that have teeth um, and any million male. That is so cool. Yeah. I love it. Well, Christine, thank you very much. I know you've got other animals to take care of. I've got a couple more things I want to share with our audience. So you guys say thanks to Christina. <laughs> Oh, cool. It's probably going to get a little bit loud. It's what we call our breeding season. Oh. Uh, and our boys do go through a rut. Now, they are teenagers. Oh. So what's going to happen is male sea lions are going to set up a territory out in the wild. And they're going to defend that territory so that other females can come and join them. So what our boys are starting to do is set up their territories for the summer inside the habitat. Oh. So you're, you're probably going to see them, uh, you know, tussling a little bit on the rock work tussling in the water and that's completely normal there you go. behavior good and to hear also one of the really good reasons that we train them because then like i said we can make sure that they don't have any serious cuts or bruises or anything like that we check them out all throughout the day to make sure that they're nice and healthy actually that makes perfect sense all right. you did tell us if I'm not mistaken, we get to, again, we get to cheat sometimes. We get to talk to Christina before and find a little bit. You told us that Owen is kind of the dominant male right now? Right now? Right now. Yeah, so right now, so Owen, Owen is, is the dominant, the dominant of the two, but that does change, um, and it will constantly change. Okay. So even though Diesel is bigger, Diesel's currently weighing in at about 290 pounds, Owen is about 250 pounds. Oh, significant. So he's a lot bigger. Um, even though Owen is smaller, he is our more... Confident sea lion. Gotcha. These are more, um, this is mine, and I'm going to defend it. <laughs> Diesel is very, very fun. He's got a big personality. He's a little bit of a chicken. So <laughs> um, he will start to defend something, but then if Owen comes up, he'll back off right away. Gotcha. So, <laughs> uh, so we are, I'm going to go ahead. I will let Owen back out, and you guys can see the two of them. Fantastic. Guys, right? well, thank you thank so you. Very much, Christina. So awesome. That was awesome, and congratulations. Yeah, That's great you. stuff. How cool is that? To be able to think you have that wonderful relationship that's built up. I only have a couple extra things I want to share with you. I think some, some natural history stuff that you guys might enjoy. These guys, do. they are found in the ocean, as, as Christina said. They're those marine mammals. But in the water, they've got to kind of watch out and how they take care of their temperature, and they use that through their flippers. Check this out. cheat a little bit this is remember how she said that the seals have the claws you don't see them on sea lions so this is a seal uh, but it's the same structure it's the same idea and look at that how cool is that five and five but for the sea lions what they'll do when they're in the water they'll raise that flipper out of the water they'll raise the flipper out of the water and it war it's a large a lot of blood supply that goes there so it can it can heat and cool the animal so they use those flippers as they would to kind of watch their temperature. And they have those five fingers, just like you and I do. I think that's kind of neat to be able to share that they put that flipper out. So if you're here at the zoo sometime, if you're here at the zoo and you see one with the flipper out, that's what they're doing. They're maintaining their own body temperature. And to, I can't tell you who's who, guys. So we're just going to go. There's a little bit of a tussle. Remember, we have that idea. I, you know what? It looks like that might be Owen up top just because he looks a little bit smaller, but I can't swear to that. I'm not going to go there. While you're watching them, I'm going to speak over and tell you that a group of these, yeah, I bet I'm right. I bet that's Owen closer to you, and then Diesel just popped up. So Diesel's behind. Um, a group of these California sea lions, especially when they're in water, is called a raft. A raft of sea lions. That makes sense, doesn't it? I'm trying to figure out who's who here. Look how flexible. Some of the stories that Christina was telling us was really, really fun. They're whiskers, and you can see them even here. You saw them when um, Christina was training. <laughs> Those whiskers are very sensitive. There's a lot of nerve endings at the base and through them, and they use that to <laughs> they use that to feel around in the water. Those whiskers are really sensitive, so they use them for navigation to feel around in the water. Also for prey, they can detect prey, size of prey, is prey moving towards me, is it moving away from me? So the flippers, or the flippers, I'm sorry, the whiskers are really important to them to survive 
in the oceans and waters, literally from the Gulf of Alaska all the way through Baja, California. So if you break out a map, you'll see that's a really wide range of space. Come to some of the questions that we get a lot, um, we're trying to answer as we go through. Christina mentioned they can swim about 25 miles an hour. They can dive to a depth of 900 feet. 900 feet. That's three Statues of Liberty. Statue of Liberties? Statues of Liberty? I don't know what it is there. Statue of Liberties. We'll pluralize that. <laughs> so, but three of them is how deep they can dive. And they can stay underwater, oh, maybe 15 or 20 minutes. If you've been tuning in to some of Nikki's programs, she had you guys hold your breath the other day. See how long you could hold your breath. These guys, about 15 or 20 minutes. And they can live um, out of their natural spaces, maybe 15 or 20 years. Here at the zoo, we're going to expect them to live a little bit longer than that. They're going to be able to go a little bit longer than 15 to 20 years. They are not an endangered species. They're, of, they're called least concern. That means the population is doing pretty well. That doesn't mean they don't have any concerns in the wild. Pollution is a, is a concern. Uh, oil spills, of course, when they're out and about. Um, overfishing, taking the food they're looking for is a challenge as well. And then coastal development. I wish I had an answer for you on why they stranded twice, but that was never figured out. We're not 100% sure what happened, but it does happen from time to time that there's these, quote, mass stranding events where a lot of animals strand for whatever reason. It's just awesome that the zoo was able to take care of these two. Oh, I, my craft just blew away. Hold on a second, guys. I gotta get it. I know Nikki would kill us if we yeah, lost no, our craft. That was tough. I had to run. Are you kidding me? It's perfect timing because we need to talk about it. Oh my goodness. Hold on. I had to run. Thank you guys so much for tuning in during Earth, during Earth Week. And you're seeing some of the other things we have. Those virtual visits. The zoo classrooms. Nikki's science. Neighborhood programs. The arts and crafts. And the neighborhood watch guy, the neighborhood neighbor, naturalist. neighborhood naturalist from Bob, the story time from Kathy, all those things on the Adventures in Education page. So check that out if you get a chance. And here's our craft for the day. Thanks, Nikki. Pretty simple, dude. Here's the back so you guys can see this. So all it is is paper. Remember, you can find out how to do these on Adventures in Education. There's, a, there's some information there on the crafts. But check it out. Their flipper, you guys' hand. How about that? It's a hand. And some of you guys go, oh, that's so cute. I love it. Good job, Nikki. Remember, your hand, your hand is just like a seal's hand, just like a sea lion's hand. And here you can make those flippers. So brown construction paper, some pipe cleaners for those whiskers, those very sensitive whiskers. And Google Eyes, you gotta love Google Eyes. So you can check that out, make your own. California sea lion. Really kind of fun. When Leslie took us to Churchill the other day, she told us all about Arctic foxes, and that's going to happen Wednesday. Real quick, we do have a shout out. I'm going to look at it and make sure I have the right name. Uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Sanzone or Sanzoni's class from Massachusetts. Get well soon, guys. Hope everything is going well. It's so nice you guys are tuning in with us from time to time on our Monday, Wednesday, Friday zoo. Adventures. Um, so that's a little shout out. We'll make sure I had that put in there. Thank you so much for the comment to us. We appreciate that, that we're able to come into those classrooms and share with you. Um, so Wednesday, from Leslie's talk on Friday about her trip to Churchill, she talked about Arctic Fox. Yes, that's where we're headed. We're going to go to Arctic Fox on Wednesday and see them interacting with some enrichment. So really be sure to tune in on that. 10 o'clock on Wednesday, Arctic Foxes. Keep those questions coming if you have any. We're happy to answer them and address them as we need. And uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 o'clock. We look forward to seeing you again. Please stay safe. We're happy you guys came in to us, and we're glad we could come to you as well. Stay safe. 
Be good, and we'll see you Wednesday. Bye, y'all.